My uh, talk today is on DIY sensor systems. Now, I know you guys were just over at the college, you saw some pretty neat soil moisture sensors. Uh, but we were wondering, you know, is there a way to do it on your own where it's a little bit less expensive? So, I dug around on the internet and I found this little unit here. It's called a Chirp Soil Moisture Sensor. And the point of the Chirp Soil Moisture Sensor is you can just plug a battery into it, stick it into a flower pot at your house, and whenever your flower needs to be watered, it'll start chirping at you. Now, that's not necessarily too useful out on the farm, but this thing uh, allows you to connect into a little bit better of a chip, which will allow you to transmit your data and actually visualize it and see what type of soil moisture you have going on out in your field at any given time. So, uh, and I wanted to mention the price of this thing. The Chirp Soil Moisture Sensor costs around $3.50. So it's quite inexpensive. You could deploy them pretty much anywhere and they're almost disposable, they're so cheap. So if one of them gets wrecked, it's not a huge deal. Uh, now, we were dealing with soil moisture sensors, but we also wanted to take it a little bit further. We wanted to see what other kind of metrics we could get. So uh, I tracked down this probe right here. This is a soil temperature probe. This probe costs about $1.50, and it's able to just you plug it in right next to your soil moisture sensor, and you're able to not only get soil moisture, you're able to see what the temperature of the soil is as well, which is useful for some applications. Uh, beyond that, we wanted to see what other kinds of gadgets we could plug into this thing. So this tiny, teeny tiny little chip right here, if I can get it out, it's called a BME280. This thing costs around $2.50 and it's able to get air temperature, humidity, and barometric pressure. Uh, so. That's basically the, the basics of the overall system. We also have a wind sensor here. You're able to build them pretty inexpensively if you have a, just a ball bearing that you're able to hook on to, you know, uh, if you can make these little cups. This is called a, a Nemo meter. And so basically what you want to do is you want to make three little cups that are able to rotate in the wind. I'm sure you've all seen them before on your own uh, home weather stations. So that's, that's one of the next steps that we're going to take is we're going to see how inexpensively and uh, how accurate, accurately we can create a wind sensor. So those are the overall basic components of it. Now the brains of the operation is this little chip right here. Now a lot of you have probably heard of Arduino before. It's one of the big fads. Uh, it's, it's a microcontroller, so it works essentially like a computer, but it only runs a certain function, uh, one or two certain functions that you program into it directly. So it's not able to run Windows or anything like that, but it is able to collect data from sensors and transmit it out over Wi-Fi. This one is called an ESP8266, and it's all the rage these days in home automation. Now, home automation, I know a lot of you have probably heard of this before. It's where you hook sensors and uh, different types of things up to the internet, essentially, and it links into what's called the Internet of Things. Now the Internet of Things, essentially it's just whenever you have a physical device that's able to either, you know, collect data or actually do something like water your garden, uh, that would be part of the Internet of Things. And the Internet of Things as applied to farming these days is called, uh, the, the term that's being adopted is called smart farming. Now smart farming only has about 1% adoption right now, and that's partially because of the cost issue in my opinion. Now, this type of system would probably cost you a couple thousand dollars to be able to get, uh, you know, commercially. This system that we built here, it costs a total of $25.69. So you can go ahead and, uh, yeah, right? <laughs> so you can go ahead and deploy these anywhere you want, essentially. And as long as you're able to get a decent connection via Wi-Fi, you're able to make it work. Now. That's one of the big issues here is connectivity. And besides price, that's the big thing that's stopping the adoption of smart farming is Wi-Fi connectivity, it's, it doesn't work very well. You're not able to get very long range on it. And that's why we went ahead and built a little antenna here. This is called a Yagi antenna. Uh, it's actually called a Yagi Uda array, but that's the term that's generally used these days is a Yagi antenna. Now, a normal Wi-Fi antenna, it'll send Wi-Fi out om omnidirectionally, so in all directions equally, 
and you're not able to get a very strong signal with that. But if you hook up one of these Yagi antennas to your regular Wi-Fi antenna, it takes that uh, donut-shaped Wi-Fi and it puts it together into one single stream. So the entire amount of data that you were sending out or receiving in a circle, it's all directional. So you're able to get much, much, much further internet connection, essentially. So on this, this is the receiver Yagi antenna. Unfortunately, our Quonset router had a few issues, so I had to bring it over here. But we also have two larger Yagi antennas that are actually connected to the router itself. So we had uh, this Yagi antenna pointed directly at the other Yagi antennas, which are connected to the router. And we were able to get what perfectly good Wi-Fi connection halfway out into the field out there. I haven't really tested it. Johnny or Laurel? <laughs> Laurel. Uh, yeah, so um, now the big thing about that is, OK, we have these sensor systems. We're able to collect the data. But how are we able to visualize it? You know, it's not very useful if you just have a big table of data sitting there. And that brings me to the next point, which uh, links into the home automation thing I was talking about before. There's an open source system called Home Assistant. And Home Assistant, uh, it's becoming quite popular in home automation these days, but we decided to take it out onto the farm. Now, with Home Assistant, you're able to collect all of your data locally. It's all stored on your own router, so it's completely secure. It will never go onto the internet unless you specifically configure it to get out onto the internet. And that's helpful because if you want to monitor your sensors from anywhere, you're not going to be able to do that if it's all locally done. Now, if you connect it to uh, something called a dynamic naming server or service and you use something called port forwarding, you're able to get your data, move it off your router, off your local network, send it to a link that you're able to just type into your phone so you can check out the data. Which brings me to my next point here. Oh. Yikes. Well, remember to stay away from that. So I have a link here. Uh, if anybody wants to type it into their phone, I'm trying to keep it away from the, the YouTube so um, people aren't able to necessarily access it all the time. But uh, this link, if you go to it, it'll take about a minute to, lo to show up on your phone. But once you do, you're going to get a pretty slick user interface that shows you trends involving trends involving the different uh, sensors that you put on there. So I'm not, I'm not sure if you guys can see it very well, but right here we have a little chart. So the very first metric that's on this chart is air temperature. The air temperature right now is 30.45 degrees Celsius. And it also shows the trends of it. So you can go back in time. We can see that a half hour ago, 45 minutes ago, it was about 5 degrees cooler. Uh, now we also have, as I mentioned, humidity. We have barometric pressure. Uh, we're able to calculate dew point with the technology that we have here. So that's quite handy. Uh, and now beyond that, that, those were the atmospheric conditions. From there, we can also do, as I mentioned, we have soil sensors. So we have a chart here marked uh, soil temperature. Now that would be connected to that little probe I showed, er showed earlier. And we also have soil moisture. Now, the thing with these soil moisture probes is that they need to be calibrated to actu actually get a good wetness value out of it. Right now, the values that we get out of it are just capacitance. And capacitance is affected not only by soil moisture, but also by the type of soil that you have. So that's not quite as useful as actually having wetness values. So that's something we're going to be doing uh, ongoing here is trying to calibrate these things out see how accurate they are and see if they're actually useful for agricultural applications. Um, beyond that, uh, there are a few other things I wanted to talk about quickly. Uh, we've just been using Wi-Fi, as I mentioned, but I just came across a new type of uh, connectivity protocol in the last couple days. It's called LoRaWAN. Now, this LoRaWAN. Sorry? Did you say Laura this time? Oh, right. I did say Laura. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, LoRaWAN is able to transmit, I believe, if it's sitting on your countertop about 10 miles, if you have it up on top of a pole, I've heard that it's able to do up to 200 kilometers. So that's something that might be useful if you're able to get a nice, nice decently height, uh, heighted pole in your farm. Might be able to get stuff all the way from here to, say, Medicine Hat. 
So that's something that might be really useful coming down the pipe. It's only existed for about two years now, so it doesn't have really huge adoption, but I think it's going to become a big thing in the future. Uh, beyond that, some other cool integrations you can do with this. Uh, if you have Home Assistant, as I mentioned before, the software that lets you view things, you can also integrate it with Alexa and Google Home. So if you have one of those uh, Amazon Echo units, you can actually say to it, hey Alexa, what's the soil moisture value over at plot number one? And Alexa will say, the soil moisture value at plot one is 425. So it's quite useful for that kind of thing. You don't even need to get out of bed or even look at your phone to be able to get uh, you know, your metrics out of your system. Uh, there are also, there's also one other integration I want to talk about with Home Assistant. It's called Floor Plan. It's one I haven't gotten into yet, but it essentially allows you to place a map of your entire farm, uh, just an image of it. If you have an aerial, aerial image, it allows you to get that uh, value or get that map, put it onto it, and you can place your sensors on that map where they actually are. So you can pop it open. You don't need to remember which one is sensor two, plot one, which one's sensor three. It's all physically right there in front of you. And you can just click on the actual sensor itself and the data will pop up for you. And uh, that's some of the cool stuff we've been uh, getting up to these days at Farming Smarter. Um, now, I believe that that is about it. I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I should mention this fancy little case that, case that we have here. This was 3D printed. So if you don't have a 3D printer, that's going to add a bit to the cost that you have. But they're pretty inexpensive these days. You can get one for around $150, $200. So if that's something that you might be interested in, that's something to look into is these uh, cheaper 3D printers that exist now. And then you'll be able to essentially make whatever type of system you want. And I believe that uh, that covers it. Thank you very much. <laughs> right? Tested in Canada. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer. That's just parts, not labor. That's right. Add on a few more zeros. A lot of labor. Uh, we haven't integrated it with the website at all. This just got deployed yesterday, so that's deployed. coming down the pipe. Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this system's brand new. It's just in the prototype phase right now, but eventually, yeah, I think that's going to be part of the plan is to have our sensor data just available right on the website so people can... It won't be necessarily useful for your own farm, but if you have a farm that's close by, you might get metrics that are relatively close to your own. I mean, the names of the parts and the suppliers and stuff like that. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can uh, definitely put some links up in the YouTube description uh, directly to the parts that I purchased. And, uh, yeah. If it's something that you guys are interested in, then we would continue on the program. This is a bit of an experiment just because Adam had the skills. But at the same time, the soil sensor over at Southern Drip literally cost $1,750. And then they wanted to charge me $750 a year on connectivity fees. Whereas, and then it only gives me one point in time. I'd like to have three sensors in all eight of the zones. So maybe maybe Adam's got this all figured out. Now we might set up one out at my farm and start you know, providing something useful that, that's a sellable product. Too. Maybe my farm too. Sure. <laughs> I don't we'll know see. who's paying the bills right now. Maybe right? for no, Father's Day. <laughs> Uh, any other questions? You're, uh, you talked about lower land there, so yep. that'll go out uh, 200 miles of site, and that'll take the place. Does it work as well as Wi-Fi, for example, collecting data? Or? Uh, it's actually a completely different protocol oh, from so Wi-Fi. Okay. It's, it's all still radio transmission, so it's basically the same thing, but it's a different protocol. That oh, it it's much lower power, which allows it to travel much further. It's got a longer wavelength, I believe. I think it's around the 900 megahertz, which... Uh, you can, uh, if you have the skills, actually with one of these ESP8266. <laughs> if you can copy and paste, uh, there are, is some code online already that uh, you can just copy and paste into one of these things. And uh, I believe that the cost that I saw online was $15 for a Lora Y transmitter. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> right around 15 bucks is what we're thinking. That's coming down the pipe. Anything else? All right. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you the time.